window It's my chest right in the morning Like a warning Could have slept here for days Problem is I have no idea where I'm going, so I'm gonna follow. I'll get you. I'll get you. I've got the GoPro, so just go ahead and follow him. Site 39, and um, we're staying in Fairhope, Alabama, at the, oh, I just lost the name of it, Fairhope Motorcoach Resort, and it has, some have little tiny home cabanas next to them, others have uh, shelter this one right here. I like that. That's very, very nice. And I think the one that I think where we're supposed to be, I'm not sure if there's anything at that because they told us um, a different spot from where we're actually staying. So I'm not sure if we're going to have a little cabana, a pergola, what it is. And it might just be an open space with some trees. See, I think that was supposed to be our spot 15. When we first got, when we first got notice, I was given spot 15. That's right there, but we're not in spot 15. That's a bummer.
no. We have no shelter. We have no... Oh, wait. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. So, he's going to help Robert get in. That's 38. There's 39. So we do. We have a nice little shelter with a grill. So I'm going to park the car right here. Let's see if this works. Pretty. There, I'm gonna let that keep rolling. You want me to go in and start? Yes, go ahead. You want me to go come ahead? Up, come up for the barbecue. It's free. Okay. Just bring what you want to drink. Okay. okay. We've got plenty of food. All right. All do right, we great. need to bring some chairs? Pardon? Do we need to bring any chairs with us? No. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. stuff out? Yes. All right. All right. You have um, started, I I started the started they should, Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's what it looks like to me. Whew. All right. Okay. Um, well, there's a barbecue that we're going to get ready to go to. And I need to put Bruce in the RV. He should be fine. I will put down a rug for him just in case he decides he needs to potty. Okay, um, I'll meet you guys outside. Fairhope Motor Coach is one of the Southeast's newest gated Class A Motor Coach resorts. With only 57 sites, it remains very pristine. It's only three years old and offers custom-built cottages along with Class A sites for rental and purchase. We were in Site 39, a deluxe site with a beautifully covered pergola. They come with full hookups and there is a pool with a large screen TV, fire pit, and gas grill for guests to use. Totally worth the hundred and nine dollars a night to stay there.
love the flower baskets. It's really pretty. Oh, there's the fruit quarter of Fairhope. Okay, well, yeah, we can do that. We'll walk down this side first. And really pretty, pretty little town. Oh, that's locals. That's the. This is one of the entrances to locals. Locals was the restaurant on the other side. Uh huh. Oh. Just doing the walking tour of downtown Fairhope. This is a little restaurant too. Firefly. Or dragonfly, dragonfly. Oh, look at that. And what hotel is that? Or is it just shops? shops oh, okay. Or they might be apartments on the top floor. Oh, uh, maybe. Might fall down below with shops. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It's really pretty. And then this gazebo. That's a restaurant. I think that's Sunset Point. Look at the kitty. Hi. Hi. It has a home too. Those are all the places that you can go into. Oop. The hot beignets. That's what it was. Panini Peak. amazing. moss and the trees.
big magnolia right there. Pretty flowers. <laughs> Needs a little bit of help. Look at those. They look like ro they look like Rose of Sharon. Because they look like roses. I wonder if that's what that is. But they almost have a magnolia leaf. They've had signs of some of them, but I uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Look straight ahead. Yeah, I'm going to walk down to that little pavilion down there and see what it looks like. all the time but that was really nice yep. Right. So this is the Grand Hotel, and if you're a Marriott timeshare owner, it's also one of their autograph hotels, and it's very, very lovely. Just a nice place to come, have a drink, hang out, listen to music. Or if you're here and you need a place to stay, right? Probably would be a good idea too. Yeah, exactly. A on the pricey side, but I'm sure <laughs> you get a lot of ambiance. Yes. They, I'm talking to I'm talking to our, our people. At four o'clock, they have a cannon that they fire off. But it's what time right now for us? Three twenty-two. Three forty. Oh, it's three forty. So in twenty minutes. Well, why don't guys, we just so? Uh, there's the guys with the trump. Yeah. So why don't we just sit over here? Okay. So we're gonna wait, and we're gonna look out. We're gonna watch the firing of the cannon. Which will be back that way. Uh, well, 
welcome to Grander Grit and Glory 1347. My name is Michael. I'll be your canon captain today. Welcome to Grander Grit and Glory, the uh, history of the Grand Hotel. The Grand Hotel has welcomed generations of guests since it opened in 1847. And during landmark and a tribute to Southern hospitality, the rich history and traditions of the Grand Hotel, the Queen of Southern Resorts, still exist through throughout the resort. Underneath all these beautiful oaks, just we still live. We have served as a Confederate hospital, a World War II training site, and now as a world-renowned resort and golf course as part of the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. During the Civil War, this area was a Confederate to those soldiers did not survive their stay here and buried in a cemetery across the road called Confederate Red Cemetery. Regrettably, the identity of those soldiers was lost when a ledger containing their names burned up in fire of 1869. And so they did pretty extensive research that 40 or more of those soldiers' identities have been discovered in the province of Mark Just south of here, that way, was fought the Battle of Mobile Bay, which is the largest naval engagement and fought in U.S. territory of water. You may remember from your history book, that's where Admiral Farragut sat down before Peter's Fort to the head. Actually, it could have been more like, damn, before Peter's Fort to But either way, he did what he said he was going to do. He was a very brave man. He fought the Battle of Mobile Bay at 62 years of age. And in order to see about the smoke, he had to climb way up in the rigging. The entrance to Mobile Bay, where the battle took place, is 16 miles due south of this point. And the entrance there is under four miles of water. We'd love you to count down with us, be part of the gun crew. The reason the command stand clear is given as part of the drill. If this gun wasn't bolt bolted down, we were firing a heavy blank charge or a live round. This gun would recoil in front of it. God bless America. Stand clear. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, this is what you do whenever there, I'm videoing. This is what you do when there's bad storms coming and you've got an RV. You bring the slides in and then figure out, you know, like watch TV till midnight after the storms go through. Yes, anyway. This is what it looks like. This is real, people. Right? Oh, we have no bed. Actually, I could sleep on the bed. But both of us can't sleep on the bed. Ah, oh, man. Spring. Spring is just one of those things. Oh, Bruce, what's your problem, buddy? It's like, I'm not really sure what's going on here. And you guys have put everything up. So, what do I do? What do I do? Anyway, yeah. Um, so, we brought, we brought both sides, well, all three slides in. So, that um, we don't have any toppers or uh, strong winds, tear anything. Uh, where we're at, we're pretty, I mean, we don't have a lot of trees around us or anything. And everything is put up outside, so it's just a matter of waiting till the storm front comes through, and then we'll be done, and then we'll put the slides back out. All right, you guys, um, 
Good wishes. Send us all the good wishes. Somebody is very glad that we are home from having lunch and that he doesn't have to spend time in his kennel anymore. Also, super, super glad that uh, the storm is over with and that he has a place to lay down and just relax. Don't you, Bruce Wayne? Yeah, you're such a good boy. Alrighty, honey, I won't bother you anymore and let you sleep. Okay. Hi. Welcome to our rig. We have a 2018 Holiday Rambler. Uh, it is an Endeavor Model 40 and it is a diesel pusher. And we're gonna give you a quick overview and a look around the rig. So come on to the back. We have a bath and a half and we have a very nice bedroom and we've got some closet space a TV back here, and plenty of storage, which is a really, really cool thing about this uh, particular model over our Thor, Thor Hurricane, which was 35 feet. So let me show you the bathroom. And here is our uh, my sink area, and then Robert has his own uh, shaving area and his bathroom. We've got a full-size shower, which is really nice. plenty of storage where I found that baskets and the acrylic containers help out quite a bit uh, underneath here we're able to keep even more storage this is Robert's closet Fairly good size, and we have the ability to store shoes, things like that in there. And this is our vacuum toilet, which is really, really nice. Okay, let's see the bedroom. All right, um, our bedroom has a slide that will pull in, and then we the bed has to go upright. There's a little connection over here. There's a little button over here and it'll start pulling it up. I'm going to stop it right there, but it will go all the way in and then we pull the slide in. So push that back down. We have storage under the bed and lo lots of storage under the bed with, again, a really good use of buckets trying to keep everything in its place and organized. Let that down. Um, we also have two closets for me here. Books are up there, drawers, more drawers here, our TV, and again, a nice, another nice closet with the indoor vacuum system, which is great. I use that all the time. Again, buckets make for great containers and keeping everything all together. We have a stackable washer and dryer made by Whirlpool. And we use that a lot on the road now since we do live full time in, in our rig. Robert's bathroom, I'll let him show you that. Very nice, lots of storage again. Little sink, but just enough room to brush your teeth and go to the bathroom, and do the things that you need to do in a bathroom. This is our kitchen area and we call it while it's bigger than a one buck kitchen, it still is a nice uh, space to move around. We've got the sink here, the induction stovetop here, convection microwave, uh, which is, I'm still really learning how to use this, but it's starting to 
starting to come together um, inside our dishwasher that I don't ever use. We keep our induction pots and pans and then this locks when we're on the road so that it doesn't come open because we've had it come open every once in a while. Um, ton of storage up here. A ton of storage over here. It's great. We really, really do have a place to put just about everything. Over on the refrigerator side, I don't know what the cubic feet is on this, but we've got plenty of room for groceries and a big freezer with an ice maker. So everything that you need can go into this refrigerator and then we um, we lock this up when we are on the road we have a bungee cord that we kind of come through here lock do that we used to have a picture here and Robert took the picture out took the frame or got the measurements had a piece of tin cut and this is a really nice place for us to store um, pictures of our family and stickers Things like that, magnets, we really like magnets of places that we've been, they go there. The one thing we didn't have in the Thor Hurricane is a fireplace. Bruce's bed is in front of the fireplace right now, but it's right there. TV, don't know how big it is, it, it works. And then our work area over here, uh, primarily where I sit and work, we've got a printer, um, we're able to send stuff to the printer via Wi-Fi and just little decor. Turning over to the other side, we added two uh, Rectech um, recliners that we got and had ins Robert installed them before we got on the road. And then we ordered a really nice dog kennel for Bruce so that he can be in the dog kennel when we're hiking or we've gone out to go have lunch or something like that. So, and then the cab is up front. We don't spend a lot of time up there, but I do keep our glasses and keys. I'll show you the area where we've got set apart for that is here. We can hang up our keys. And then here is our slide controls and our pet wave for internet. And that's about it that I can think of. Um, after this, we'll go outside and then Robert will tell you about the outside of the unit. Thanks for coming along with us. Hi, this is our um, new rig. It's a Holiday Rambler Endeavor 40D, so it's 40 feet long, diesel, pusher, or we'll talk about that in a minute. See, it's uh, black and white with some gray. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, the rig, we like it. On this side, you can see we've got a uh, pretty good size um, awning. It's out now. The nice thing about this, um, uh, compared to the last one, was that we uh, have full, uh, we have several full uh, across the uh, coal coach bays. We've got uh, several bays on this side. Uh, uh, but you, uh, that one has all my tools in it. It has uh, two very nice pull-out slides. Put your thing, put your uh, put your things in and pull it out so you don't hit the <laughs> slide, which I've done several times. The other one also has one. We have a nice outside TV. watch the game we need to or the other night we sat out and watched a, a movie it was very nice um, it has three slides this is the slide corresponding with the um, with the dining room and then we have this is where my bathroom is on the other side then this is where our bedroom slide is again we have uh, we have more slides I mean uh, storage units very nice uh, place to uh, hang up some tools very nice and 
more storage there. Then we have a we have an Aqua Hot, which is an on-demand uh, water heater. So uh, it only has a very small tank, but it's endless hot water. It's worked out really well. Run by uh, propane. We've added. Oops. We added a couple things to go along with the batteries that we installed, which we'll talk about it. Um, back up in here, we have something called a DC DC converter, which uh, because of the way that the batteries work, um, we have to. Uh, make sure that it gets doesn't burn up the alternator on the engine also she swung by there we have a hundred watts of solar up on top for our solar um, battery charging it's a very nice coach it has a 2800 watt inverter so that uh, if we boondock or if we don't have any electrical hookups we can still run the refrigerator inside which is a which is an AC refrigerator just like you have at home. So you have to have some type. So it turns DC, DC power from the batteries, 12 volt into 120 volt AC power. This is the big power hog here. It's a 380 horse uh, Cummings diesel on a Freightliner chassis with uh, 10 airbags to give you a nice ride going down the road. Better than that uh, F53. Ford chassis we had on the uh, on the other one on her mind. Over here is one of the biggest investments we made over the summer. I have six 100 amp um, lithium batteries. Provides us with uh, enough power to run um, everything in the coach except for the air conditioners, pretty much, and uh, the cooktop for somewhere into 18 to 24 hours without having to recharge. So that gives us the opportunity not to have to have hookups if we want to need to pull over to the side of the road or if we go to a place called Harvest Host, which is usually breweries or wineries, and we'll be able to set up there for the night, uh, enjoy the libations, and not have to worry about running the generator. More, uh, this is a place where I put the two more batteries there, and then it not only has coach batteries, which were the lithiums, but also has two deep cell cycle batteries to run and start the diesel engine. That's def tape there for the diesel. For the environmentalist. We have, uh, we had this on the other coach. Uh, because we are full time, we wanna be real careful about the water we have. So we have a three filter, filter filtration system to make sure that we're getting the cleanest water we can. We have a 0.5, a 0.05 filter, and then we have a virus filter that's built into the coach. I just changed them out today. I change them out about every three months. Um, they're not too expensive, but just you do drink a lot of water or use a lot of water, so it's important. We also added this this summer, I mean, this winter when we were off. The big blue tank there, the, that is a so, um, water softener system. To, uh, so you don't get any scaling, or uh, if you get a lot of hot, hard water we had, which we had last when we were in the uh, west last year. So that just uh, softens the water uh, and just gives you nice soft water, not only to wash your clothes, it's in the entire coach, so wash your clothes, take a shower in, whatnot. So it's very nice. It was, I think it's a, it was a good investment. These are the two full flow through uh, bays it's big enough that we can put our electric bikes in there that's one of them the other one's in the bay forward to that uh, I put them in those things and they they stay out of the weather and I'm able to get them out pretty easily uh, if we want to go riding we uh, it's a pretty much a full electric coach except for a few things like the aqua hot in the back and also for uh, I have a a way to hook this up so that we could use the grill, the um, blackstone, and the fire pit. And it's got a 35 gallon uh, LP gas, which is a pretty nice size one. And it lasts us, we usually fill it up maybe three times a year. This is the big slide on this side. It goes, as you can see, it goes the entire length of the coach. It's about a 30 foot slide. So it goes from 
where Bruce's dog thing is all the way back uh, to Kathy's two closets in the bedroom. So it's a very nice slide and, uh, and it works really well. The coach, uh, max weight on coach is 36,400 pounds. That includes the Jeep. Um, we're running at about 34, 33,000 pounds right now, 34,000 pounds. So we have a couple thousand pounds to work with. You do need a, a Class B license in, te in the state of Texas to drive this. I, first time in 45 years, 50 years, I had to go take a driver's test, but it wasn't too difficult. And it worked out really well. So now I have a Class B license and it's worked out well. That right there, um, I would I would open it, but I have to crawl down. We have an 8,000 uh, kilowatt uh, generator, uh, diesel power generator, Owen diesel power generator, right here in the front. We pull out behind this panel right here. It pulls out. You can run down the road with it on. You can run with it closed, or you can open it up to give it a little bit of ventilation if you're sitting somewhere. Works really nice. It'll it powers the entire coach, including all three air conditioners. And I didn't mean to that. We do have three air conditioners in this one, two of the air conditioners, the heat pumps, so we don't have to use that much uh, uh, propane to heat the, uh, heat the unit. Also, this is our nice thing here. This is where we're going. We like this. Obviously, not all of these are in this coach. This Most of this was last year, but this year we're gonna fill in this part right here. And uh, so we've had a great time last year with Hermione. We got all these south, southeast states, then we went through all of this. It was really kind of, kind of cool. So, you know, we've had a great time. It's a, uh, it's a nice coach, much, much of an uh, improvement over the last coach in not only power, but drivability and, and, and ride. And I think we're going to have a great summer. It should be a good time. It is 5 o'clock. It's five o'clock someplace. So somewhere we're making pina coladas. Friday night.